Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second webinar in financial modeling. Uh, I'm going to start with what is considered by many as the most difficult topic on my training sessions, and that is how to pronounce my name, Rui uh, Subreiros, which you can see on your, on your screen. Uh, well, the reason why it's so strange is because it's Portuguese name, and that's, that explains the strange accent also. Uh, I'm a financial modeling trainer here at Operas, and for those that might not know Operas, we are an English company founded in 1990, uh, based in London, Cannon Street, just behind me. And Operas activities do cover a full portfolio of project finance related services, including financial advice, model audit, financial modeling training, and financial modeling software, for which, by the way, I'm also the product manager. Uh, with me, I also have my colleague Jack Clark uh, by my side, and Jack will be helping me with managing your interventions or questions. So you have a chat feature, and uh, as, as you saw now, uh, Jack will be following your, your messages and passing me your questions. Um, to keep a, a, a nice pace during the presentation or during the webinar, um, I will ask you to type your questions at any time, and then we keep those questions to a Q&A session in the end. Um, also, there is a, a limited interaction with you. Uh, will be very much just me talking, I'm afraid. But feel free to raise your hand. You have on the bottom of your screen a small toolbar where you can see a small hand. When you raise your hand, Jack will track that and will let me know of any issues, okay? The duration for the webinar will be around 30 minutes plus the Q&A, and hopefully you'll be having a screen now with a PowerPoint slide and also my, my image, my video uh, camera. So let's start by having a look um, on what's the plan for today. So today I'm going to talk about understanding circularities, or also known as circle references, and iteration in Excel. And the plan, as I'll be moving to the next slide, will go through what is a circularity, just a, a quick definition of a circularity, then what's wrong with having circularity, so what, what are the risks and what all these fuss about having circularities on a model, the different types of circularities that you might find on the model also, and for the different types, the different solutions. And we have here two solutions, the logical switch mechanism, we're going to have a look on that. And also, we're going to finish by building a quick macro, famous or infamous copy-paste macro. So let's start with the idea of what is a circularity. A very clear definition again. When an Excel formula refers back to its own cell, either directly or indirectly, it creates a circle reference. So that's exactly the definition of a circularity. And we're going to have a look on, a, on an example of a possible circularity. It's, it's a common circularity on a financial model. And again, this is simply as an example. It's not my intention to teach you how to calculate interest, but to identify uh, uh, the, the circularity um, within an interest calculation. So what we have here, it's uh, very much two cash flows. You might have three cash flows, including an investing cash flow. And those three cash flows, the sum, is what we know as net cash. Well, net cash, if it's positive, means that you have cash. If it's negative, it's an overdraft. And in both, you will need to calculate interest. Interest that you can receive if it's cash, interest that you need to pay if it's overdraft. That interest value, or those interest values, if you do a net interest, which probably will be the paid last received, that interest will have to be paid through one of the cash flows. So actually, you will have a circle reference within the interest now uh, using Excel. In a model, you might see other circularities, are, are there are some topics very prone to circularities, like dividends, arrangement fees, DSRAs, debt services of accounts, loan life cover issues. These two, because they are looking ahead. So you're looking at the cash flows ahead. Well, but the cash flows ahead will also depend 
on the cash flow today. So there is a circularity, a circle reference also within those um, calculations. So these are some examples. We're gonna use the interest um, during our uh, demo. So I'm gonna switch back here to my Excel and I'm gonna try to do a quick calculation here for an interest on a, let's call it a senior bet. So I'm gonna type here a senior opening balance brought forward and a senior carry forward. And on the first one, and also I'm gonna create here just a small color that we call this the base column. So let's say that we started two, with 200 and the opening balance, it's nothing more than the previous. And I'm using here a shortcut, which is control R. Every time I use a shortcut, I will try to mention that so that my colleague Jack will put it on the chat if you want to keep the, the shortcuts uh, after the, the webinar. So control R to copy across. And then I'm gonna also need an interest rate as well as the interest itself, which is our goal to cap at the interest. Interest rate, interest rate, let's say 5%. Well, let's put it 5% across the period of your project. Right? And the interest formula, well, the carry forward will be for sure the opening balance plus the interest. It can be plus or minus, really depends on what you're doing in cash or you're doing an overdraft. On this case, it's a senior that, so it increases your carry forward balance. I'll do enter and again, control R, copy across. Right, so let's do the interest calculation. By definition, we should use the average of the opening balance and the closing balance, and that average times the right. So that's exactly what we're gonna to try to do here. The average of the opening balance, the closing balance times the rate. And this is the message that you get when you build a, a circle reference in Excel. And just keep in mind that it says here something like there are one or more circle references, one or more. Well, just do okay. And I'll just copy across again. So what will be the approach? What are the solutions for this? Well, first solution, and the one that you should always consider in first place is there is something wrong on your calculation. There's uh, probably a wrong cell reference, something that causes circularity. So that should be your first approach. Try to think about the formula that you have and how you can avoid having this kind of formula. Banks, for example, will avoid this circularity by using not the average, but the opening balance, which is not a problem if you do the calculations every day. So you can easily use just the balance from yesterday times the rate. So that will be the first and I'll say the most correct way to approach a circularity is to rework the formula and avoid it. But if you really need the circularity, if you decide that you need to use the average, in that case, what we can do is use an Excel feature, which is the interaction, interactive calculation or iterations. And the way to activate that feature is by using file options formulas, and I will enable interactive calculation. Now here we have two different values where we can define how many iterations we want to Excel to run the maximum amount. So Excel will do 100 loops for until it reaches a value, or also it will use a maximum change value. This maximum change, it's the difference between the previous value and the next value. So you do one calculation, a loop, and then you get the second value. The difference between the two, if it's less than 0.01, it will stop the iterations. So let's keep this, the default values. And when you do okay, you now have interest values. And as you see, very specific numbers, which means that probably he reached that 0.001 maximum change between the interest calculations and stopped. It might not need 100. I will just do a quick formatting here. I'm gonna use Control Shift 1 
that will assign the number format and the same here, control shift one. And here's the iterations working. Now let's say that you keep building your model and you build another formula, which in this case will be something like this. So you see that I'm using a sum including the cell with the sum. So that's another circularity. But this time when I press enter, I get 300. And 300 because Excel is doing the sum and then looping 100 times. And he uses, now he's using the 100 times, well, because the difference between the last calculation and, and, the, and the current one is higher than that maximum change. So he do it, does 100 loops. And this is the risk with circularities, is when you have one and using iterations. It's when we have one circularity, which you're, you're aware of, but you can build another one and you might not be aware of it. And if I change the interest rate now, you'll see that every time Excel recalculates the spreadsheet, that value increases by 300. That is the risk. So first option, rework your formula. Second option, use iterations. When using iterations, you get the risk of having more circularities. How can we control this? By using the idea of a logical switch mechanism. So I'm gonna create somewhere here on the top, a Boolean cell, a Boolean value, true or false. And I'm gonna use a range name here. So I'm gonna use control shift F3. That will assign a range name to that selection. So now we have this cell known as switch. I'm gonna wrap my formula, my circularity, on an if statement. So if I type if switch equals true, we don't need the true here. I want to do the average, otherwise I just want zero. When I copy across, what you have now is two, so the circularity keeps calculating, but this one doesn't. And when I switch off the iteration, so file options, and then formulas, and I will disable the iterations. You will now see that again, you have the message saying you have circularities, but now Excel recognizes the second as the first circularity. So actually you don't have any more circularity here because that one is controlled by your switch. So if you build a new one, that will be always the first and you get a message. So that's the idea behind the logical switch mechanism. If you have a circularity and you want to keep it, before you use the iterations, you wrap on the if statement depending on the switch, so you can disable, and then if you build a new one, it will be always the first and you get the message. So first option done, second option using the circularities, uh, the iterations done. What is then the third option? Well, the problem with using iterations as you see is that once you put them on and my switch to true, you get the numbers and the unknown will keep rising. So we would like to have the iterations off all the time. So I will switch off the iterations, which is your, the normal state. This is how you should always work. But now if we think about what is an iteration, it's nothing more than taking these values and use them again on the interest formula to give a new interest. So it's, it's, it's a cycle. So we're gonna recreate that cycle using manual operations and then recording those manual operations in a macro. So let's try to do that. I will just put it here false. Well, let's keep it true anyway. And I will insert a couple of new rows. So I'm just using here another shortcut, which is shift spacebar to select a row. And then I'll use Control Shift Plus to insert um, new rows, Control Shift Plus. So let's call this Senior CF, the Senior CF calculated. And here I'm gonna use another Senior CF, but this time I'm gonna call it Pasted. So if I do a copy, Control C, and then I go down here and I'll do a paste values. 
I have exactly the same numbers, and my interest formula will now be depending not on the calculated, because that's my circularity, but it will depend on my pasted values. And when I do OK and copy across, I don't have any circularity now. Well, but the problem is you need to keep doing the copy and you need to paste values all the time until you get proper values. And meanwhile, I'm going to get rid of our second circularity here. So I'm going to use control minus, by the way, control minus to delete. So we have the senior CF is the brought forward plus the interest and the interest is based on um, value. Right, so what can we do here? So what we can do now is if I change the interest rate, control R, you'll see that the values calculated are different from the pasted. So I should do copy, paste values again, keep doing copy, paste values again, and I should do this until the numbers are very similar. It, once the numbers are very similar, then you can stop the process, copy paste values. Well, again, you don't want to do this 10 times or 50 times or even 100 times. So we need to automate this procedure. But we need like something that will tell us when to stop. And when to stop is when the difference between these two is near zero or zero. So let's calculate the difference on our CF. And this difference will be something like this, can be positive or negative. Now, it's not relevant if the difference is positive or negative, so I will wrap this on an ABS function, absolute function, so I can get just absolute values, copy across. And if you have not 10 columns or seven and you have 200, you don't want to go through all these values and check if they are zero. So I'm gonna do a max here. And the max of all these range that will give me the highest number. So you want this number to be next to zero. And I'm saying next to zero because it's very difficult to have exactly zero due to the decimal precision in Excel. So let's build another cell on the top that will define somehow a tolerance. And actually, we're gonna assign a range name for this. Control Shift F3 again, assign the range name. And what we want is to keep running our operation here, paste values again, until that value is at least equal or less than the tolerance. And I'll just do it one more time. There you go, it seems to be okay. And this is where you stop that procedure of copy paste. So as I was saying, let's try to automate by using a macro. So I'm gonna change the numbers here again, copy across, and we want to calculate the carry forward where the difference is below or equals to the tolerance. So what you need to do is to record these two steps, copy paste values. How to record, how to create a macro, you need to have the developer ribbon. If you don't have it, you need to go to file options and then customize ribbon and make sure that you have the box ticked here on the developer. So you can see that ribbon. And then once on the developer, I'm gonna record macro, copy, paste, that's my micro name, will be saved on this workbook. And when you do OK, Excel is now recording all your steps. And you can see it here. You have also a button to stop the macro, or we can stop it here. So what the macro will do is, let's select the values here, copy, move down, paste values, enter, and I'll do just F9, just in case you have your calculation mode in manual. So you do F9 to recalculate. And this is all the macro has to do. So if I stop the macro now, the recording, I would like to check the code. Why? Because your macro will just run one cycle and we want to run as many as needed to meet the tolerance. So how do I have access to that code? By using another shortcut, which is Alt F11. 
So by pressing Alt F11, that will open the Microsoft Visual Basic Editor. And you will see that you have a modules folder. And inside that modules, you have at least one. Module one is the, num the name by default. You double click, and that's your macro. So as you see, just moving a bit to the right, we have here range F4 to L4, select, copy the selection, go to F5, paste values, and then calculate. We have here another instruction here, which is the application cut copy mode equals false is the same as when you do a copy and then you do paste and then press escape to cancel the copy. That's, that's the meaning of that line, which we can keep it anyway. So how do we wrap this inside the loop in VBA on the macro? Well, by using a do until or do while loop structure. So I'm going to start with do until. And the condition is that our cell E6 has to be less or equal to our cell tolerance. So range E6 less or equal to the range and you can use the cell reference or you can use a range name if you assign it. So, and then a loop word which tells Excel where it ends the looping calculation. So anything inside the do loop lines will be repeated until the condition is met. So I'm going to do a tab here. So let's try now. I'm looking just behind to see the numbers. I'll just click anywhere on the macro and run. Okay, and you do F5. There you go, you have zero. Let's try to change the numbers. Copy across, back to our macro and run. And you can see easily uh, the, the loop calculation running until the difference is met, or at least the condition. So this is a very quick example of a macro to solve a circularity, to hard code the circularity um, without uh, any, and you don't need any special VBA skills or anything. It's a very, very straightforward um, macro. And you can apply then the macro, or copy paste the entire macro for different areas on different circularities that you might have on the model, and then just create a button that will run all those macros when you want it. And that will avoid the use of the iterations option in Excel. So going back to my slide here, so just to as, as a, a, a refresh on what we saw so far, we have different types of circularities. Remember the first one was a convergent circularity which means that the value converges to a single number, the case of the interest, and that is where the maximum change uh, will come off. Or you have a divergent circularity, like the second example, the one plus two, which will work with the maximum iterations. So these are the two types of circularities, and as we saw, we have three solutions. Well, the first one, again, remember, just re write the formula to avoid the circularity, for example, on the interest by using an opening balance, or use a logical switch, switch mechanism, so the true and the false cell, and then wrap on an if statement, so that the next one will be always the first unknown circularity, or you can use a macro to hard code the circularity. So, it basically the decision has to do also with the precision. If you want an accurate value, then you have to pay that accuracy by having slower calculations, iterations, or, or a macro. If you want less accurate values, less precision, then you can rewrite and use the idea of the BF. It's not a precise value, but it will make the model much more, much more quicker. Also, and there's, there's a different approaches in terms of the use of circularities on a model, and this is important to mention. Uh, depending on our audience. In Europe, um, the financial modeling community tends to avoid, and the, all, the, all the people in, um, involved in financial modeling, tend to avoid circularities because the reasons that, that I already said. But 
circularities are seen as something normal and without any problem to use on on the American um, financial services community. And actually, in business schools, they teach uh, to use uh, circularities. So there's different approaches to the use of circularities. So this is another screenshot of the example that we just built. Okay. And we have here the copy-paste macro that we saw. The difference that I have here is I'm using a do-while do while the difference is greater than the torus. It's exactly the same. And you can do a copy-paste special, as we've done, or you can just say that the range CF pasted equals the range CF calculated. And that's exactly the same as a copy-paste. And then we have the calculate, which is the same as F9, and the loop. And that's, that's a copy-paste macro. And again, these are the three different approaches to the different solutions that we can uh, have at circularities and also the risks. Well, um, we've now finished the demo uh, on this subject. You can see on your screen also if you need any more help or if you want to check some details about our training courses, please feel free to get in touch with Jack. Um, and now I'm available for any questions that you might have on the chat. Um, if there's any questions, Jack will let me know. If there's no questions, I'll just like you to thank you for your time. And I hope to see you again on the next uh, webinar.